mobile homes depreciate. And yes, of course, individual mobile homes do depreciate. There's an NADA value guide. There's a blue book value for manufactured homes. Now that's in their own park or in the parks, uh, not attached to private land, you know, in a dealership, just, just the rectangle uh, of the mobile home itself. So they do appreciate, I think most of us can agree with that, just like a car, uh, mobile homes do depreciate. Uh, but let's go ahead and take an example, and I wanna show you why that question really does not matter. The question you should be asking yourself about mobile homes depreciating or not is, is the mobile home a good value? Because depreciation really does not matter, and I wanna show you why. Uh, so let's say that uh, it's a 19, in, in 1980, this mobile home was worth $30,000 brand new and i'm just making up a number here i'm sure in 1980 there were homes worth 30,000 are brand new and then right now the present day okay this home is now worth let's say ten thousand dollars and i'm just making up a number so in the blue book value this is worth ten thousand dollars that's what people should pay but again i want to show you why that doesn't matter and this is not accurate this is not the real world so I like to first talk about, let's talk about single family homes and mobile homes on land, you know, property, uh, mobile homes and, you know, homes, dwellings with land. Let's talk about that first. Then let's talk about cars. Then I want to talk about individual mobile homes because mobile homes are not like single family homes. They're not like mobile homes on land and they're not like cars. So a single family home and a mobile home attached to private land with that, you know, the land and the mobile home are together you can go ahead and get an appraisal. Banks will typically lend on those types of properties and you can go and have an appraisal done on your property and they're gonna find the appraiser is gonna look at what's sold recently in the area that's similar to the subject property. And let's say the appraisal comes back for $200,000. Well then, a bank may very well likely lend for $200,000 because that appraisal is the you know, professional value of what somebody should pay for it. It is what is selling in the local market. So it's not a, you know, a guess, it, it's really what is being sold. So a mobile home on land and a single family home, they, they do have appraisals. And when you have a mobile home attached to land, well, the value of that land can certainly go up over time. So a mobile home on land and single family homes, we understand that a little bit more. Let's talk about a car. Now a mobile home is personal property, just like a car. However, there's over 300 million cars across the United States. So if you want to 2010 Pontiac something or other, you can go ahead and find that in your town. And if one person is asking two or three times what the value is, you know, what the blue book or NADA value of that car is, you can go to five or 10 other people in town and you can compete against all of them and you can get the best price. Or you can go outside of your state or your, go across the nation and find a good deal and then drive it back to your area. So a, a car is, is completely different than a mobile home, and yet they do depreciate as well. But a mobile home now, let's talk about an individual mobile home, uh, again, not with land, in a park, maybe it's in a dealership, maybe it's on a piece of land that has to be moved, but that just individual home by itself, you can go ahead and pay, let's say present day, that home was worth 30, and now as a buyer, and we're going to talk about what you should be looking for as a seller, a buyer, and an investor, you can purchase this home for whatever the market will bear. And that's what a mobile home is worth, what somebody will pay for it. Because let me ask you, in, in California versus uh, Wyoming, mobile homes are going to be different prices. Uh, during the winter times and during the summer times, mobile homes are going to be different prices prices. And I do another video, please uh, click here or in the, the, link, uh, the link below uh, in the description uh, about how to add value to your property. You can move it from one location to another. Or you have a mobile home, you can do sweat equity and increase the value. Let's say if there was a uh, celebrity living in your mobile home. I know Pamela Anderson and Matthew McConaughey, Minnie Driver have all lived in mobile homes. Well, those mobile homes, just for the sheer fact that a celebrity lived in them, is going to be worth more money. So there are ways, there are definitely clear, logical um, ways that we can increase a value in a mobile home. Um, so we can increase it. Uh, and then also it's simply worth what the market will pay. So now you're a seller and you're saying, John, you know, as a seller, I have no idea where I can, what I can sell my mobile home for. And my answer to you is I want you to get the most money that you can get in the amount of time that you have to sell. 
So be aware of your situation at first. If you have five days, you're probably going to need to sell quickly. If you have five months before you need to sell, you're going to have some time. If you're being evicted by the park, you even have less time. So know your situation, know your local market demand, know the number of buyers. You know, who's out there? Do they want to pay cash? Do they want to rent? Do they want to give you payments? What kind of repairs do your, does your home need? Because if it needs repairs, that's money your buyer is going to have to eventually spend on the home. It's repairs you probably should have done, but since you didn't, you know, you kept that money, and that's money that, again, this buyer is going to have to do. Competition. What are people asking? People can ask anything they want. What's really being sold? You know, how quickly does it sell? What does it sell for? So ask around in your local park. Be aware of the advertising you have. The more people that see your home, the better. Uh, and you want to be aware about park rules, the application process. Is that difficult? Are you, uh, you having people that are going to the park and being denied? Also, the time of year we talked about. If you're a buyer, be aware of what else is for sale in the market. Okay, be aware. And make sure that you love it. I'm going to skip to right here. Make sure that you love this home. Now, as an investor, you're investing in a property. But as a buyer, make sure you really like it. You like the area. You want to raise your family there. It's right for you. Uh, how did the seller get to that price? Be aware of repairs, of course. Walk through the home. Have an inspector there if you want. Have a handyman. Uh, know the park rules. Also, what's your plan B? You know, keep in mind, if you don't buy this home, you know, don't get too emotional. There's plenty of sellers out there. Now, if you're, you're an investor, I want you to know all of these things plus so much more, uh, including your exit strategy. Uh, or does the home have land? Are you going to rent it? How are you going to sell it? Uh, the seller's motivation, be aware of that. Also, what's for sale in a 60-mile radius of you? We want to know, you know, we want good deals, of course, but there may be a better deal uh, around you. And you can go ahead and purchase that better deal first and then move on to this good deal. So there's definitely a strategic you know, method to the madness for investing. Also be aware, again, like I said, uh, the time of the year. I hope that this really made sense. Uh, it can be sort of uh, not confusing to grasp this concept. But if you have any questions or concerns, please never hesitate to reach out to me. I'm always here to help at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Again, support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Thank you so much for watching.